Okay, welcome everybody. We're you want to get your food and then no, no, I'm good. you're good. Recording in progress. Okay. So we're gonna call the meeting. Oops. Gonna call the Washington Central. Oops. My thing is acting up. Yeah. We're gonna call the Washington Central Unified Union School District meeting to order. It is February 7th and it is 617. Yeah, I wanted to start today by it is the school board's appreciation month. Um, my my is acting out is going like this instead of like stopping on my agenda. Sorry. So my little district, I'm like <laughs> so yeah, it's school board's appreciation month. So I wanted to thank everybody on on the board. You know, we've had, you know, sometimes not every not everybody in our communities understand exactly what our work is, but you know, we've been sitting around the table for a while and I am really appreciative of all of you and our superintendent is who understands our work the most, you know, and I know our administrators do too, but it is, it, you know, it's, it's not always uh, understandable to, to everybody. So, and our superintendent who understands our work is as effective as, as we are willing to put the work as the, as the board. And we are really proud of all the work that we've done in board development and that we are all willing to be thoughtful and to model civil engagement, not just for our students and our administrators, but for our communities. And it's not, you know, that's not the norm everywhere. So I'm really proud of that work. So I want to congratulate you all. Uh, and we're committed as a board on, like I said, in professional development. And I'm looking forward to continuing the work with you uh, in raising the bar for all, and not just in academic excellence, but also uh, I had this mind, uh, this phrase in mind that greatness is what we do for others. And I'm grateful for you, and, that, and I'm committed to the impact that we can have, not just. Uh, the impact that we can have in the life for others, especially uh, the ones uh, farthest away from opportunity. And uh, I want us also to remind us to, to prioritize our wellness. So with that, I want to say today, put your oxygen masks on today first before we, we're going to need them. <laughs> for the, as you know, for this budget season has come, it's a little more complex than we have ever encountered as a, as a board, but uh, I'm grateful for all of you. So congratulations on being awesome school board members. And I hope you guys all received your gift from, did you guys get in the mail? Your Vermont School Board Association letter cheat sheet. Okay. With that, uh, any changes to the agenda? <laughs> seeing, seeing. You want to add a 5.2? Yeah. I, here. It's tough. Okay. So I would like to add a 5.2 and that in under finance, because the finance committee had the ability to meet this week, a, a Act 127 update. Great reception of guests. I see you, Jonathan, there. I want to thank Jeannie and Mike for being here with us tonight. And they're the, uh, they'll be on our agenda in a little bit. Any public comments? I don't see anybody. So with that, I, we are today at U32. And Stephen, the floor is yours. All right. Thank you, everybody. Um, sorry I'm not on a school board to get that fantastic gift. <laughs> Must be worthy of um, So I really appreciate um, the opportunity for U32 to showcase the social emotional learning that we do here at the school. Um, I would be remiss in actually not starting off with the reasons that we need social emotional learning and one of the most prominent ones. Um, some of you may not have been privileged to a uh, message that I sent out to families this morning. Last night, we had um, uh, a Lamoille parent was here for a girls basketball game and reported through social media um, with a photo um, that the N word was written on the dirt on the back of her car. Um, so, and that was while she was attending the basketball game. 
So we've reached out to the parent. Um, we're working to investigate the incident. We've also reached out to the state police as well to let them know of the incident. Um, I will say that we weren't able to do a whole lot of investigation today because we also had an early dismissal because of a water main break um, down at the bottom of Gallison Hill. And so um, we are beginning our investigation. We will let you know as we know more about this incident, um, but uh, that's really all we know at this moment in time. So I just wanted you to know that. But it also kind of lends some of the reasons why we do the things that we do. I am not going to be speaking very much. In fact, I'm almost done. Um, Lisa is going to MC um, our presentation on social emotional learning. And what you're going to see is a wide variety of uh, presentation, uh, mostly video, of what goes on here at U32. Um, and I will also remind you that it doesn't encompass everything uh, that happens here. But we hope that you um, enjoy seeing some of the wonderful things that go on in the school. And we really appreciate you. Um, Finally coming to you, 32. You're here. <laughs> um, and so we appreciate that. So I'm going to turn this over to Lisa. If you're, I know that you do know Lisa LaPlante, our Director of Student Services. Jess Wills, our Assistant Principal, and Amy Molina, our Assistant Principal, we're all here uh, for this presentation. So, as Stephen said, um, I we decided, mostly me, that it would not be fun for you to listen to me talk on and on and on for 15 minutes. So, we uh, asked many people that you'll hear from tonight, and I want to thank them publicly for creating videos. There's students, there's some staff members, there's an administrator, mm -hmm. uh, while Mark puts the slideshow together. We, I also know, right, that you all have had presentations, I think, from all five of the elementary schools. So I'm making the um, assumption, I try to do that often, that you know what SEL is, right? And our presentation aligns to the five castle standards. There's a link in there, which we can then share later that explains, right? But you've heard this five times already. And I think you all know that SEL is really important because students need to feel safe in order to learn. And what you'll see in the presentation tonight is SEL is not just for the students. It's for all of us. I think you were in your beginning, right, talking about, uh, I forget what word you used, but it, it aligned perfectly with, right, social and emotional, what I've always called how to human oh, right, in this world. So, hope they can find it. Right. We, 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 we had it there up, right? moments ago. Uh, so, why is um, here so, we have the presentation built for you in three different layers, right? So, layer one would be supports that all students receive. Layer two would be supports that some students received, and then layer three being more sort of one on one. And that's how the, the presentation is actually built. And Mike has found it. Um, Was it the approach to supporting behaviors? No, nope. the way left. Oh, actually, just, so just share. You can present. Oh. You can present. Mm -hmm. You can present. Mm -hmm. I'm looking for that one we wanted to preload or is that the issue? You know, remember what's um, over here? Was there a push just? Yeah, that was that one. Yep. Yeah, I don't know what the other one is. It's great. It's going to be I also want to plug so it's the board appreciation month. It is School Counselor Appreciation Week. Oh, so thank you. It's a very good week to be. When Stephen told me it was this week, it was, yes. And you'll see from this, this is way broader than just the school counselors. You just have to share screen, right? That's the screen. Okay. Yeah. And now I can get there. Present your screen. Sorry about this. That's okay. So there you go. There you go. Gonna hit present. Okay. All right. Back arrow. Preview. All right. So if you don't mind, I'm gonna plot here. So, all right, we covered. Nope. Hold on, too many taps. Right, so we talk about what is SEL. It's so that people can acquire the knowledge and skills and attitude right, to develop healthy identities, understand, manage set emotions. Right, so that lines up into the five 
strategies that you've heard about from the last um, five elementary schools. So because we have lots of videos, we are going to, so Mark, is there a way to move the panel? Yeah. No, it's all there. That's interesting. So while he's doing that, what I will say is in TA, right, we ask our adult TAs to start um, TA at least three times a week in proactive circles. This year, we've been asking our TAs to try to increase people's gratitude muscles and their distress tolerance muscles, right? So to be able to sit in discomfort a little bit longer. So we have circles and even in our faculty meetings and when we start meetings, we ask people to share one thing that made them smile in the last 24 hours and one thing that was hard. So who are my guinea pigs? Give somebody give me one thing that made you smile in the last 24 hours. Anybody? Ursula? It's been sunny for like five days right? <laughs> after like January. Yeah. All right. And anybody, something that was hard. We just lost our game 4 2 to Hartford. Oh. Oh. That's why I'm late. Thank you. Oh. All right. The other thing on here is in the middle school, Sorry. Amy does a great job. There is a morning middle school oh, welcome screen. Every day it changes. So when the kids come downstairs, they see something like that picture there. There's also a place for shout outs. So faculty and staff can send things to faculty, students, or whatever in regards to things that they've, they've done. So we're going to start with a quick video from middle school flex time. Flex time happens in grades 7 and 8 every Wednesday for an hour. And we are working on SEL. So it is um, all of the school counselors, the high school counselors and myself are in the eighth grade. And then the middle school two counselors and the social worker and um, Jill Abair and Amy and other people come in um, and also um, provide SEL stuff. So this first video. All right, so that was Jamie Spector, who is our um, social worker. Okay, then, like I said, it's not just about the, the students, it's also about the adults in this building. So we have professional development for the faculty, and we also have monthly TA training around social emotional um, skills. We've also been lucky enough this past year and last year to have Joelle Van Lent, who is a school psychologist who used to work for Northeast Family Institute. And now she is a consultant with a bunch of different schools. She comes in, she came in twice um, this year for us so far and provided some social emotional learning around executive functioning, right, for our students, which we're seeing that more and more students need some help with executive functioning. And then in addition for the adults, Jamie, who's on the video, um, also does consultations with the middle school cores and the ninth and 10th grade teams. So some more layer ones. So this spaces. So we have the spark room, which you'll see a video about, which is a place where they can seek positive answers, reset and keep going. We have the rise space, so restorative in school. We have our transition program. We have our Zen Den, which is this picture with the nice tree in the back that's in the upstairs for the high schoolers in Zenith. So I'm gonna play the Spark video for you. My name is Rory and this is Maxwell and we are in U32 Spark Center. Um, Maxwell, why do you use Spark? So that I can uh get some breaks and do some work or whatever. Because I have a because yes. Why why would you work in Spark instead of your math classroom, for example? Probably because I uh 
don't like math. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, well, I'm not kidding about the I don't like math part, but I mean, like, I mean, like, I have a ton of, like, people in my classroom who, uh, who just go over the top, and, um, like, they're about to explode, um, from energy, like, especially in science. Hmm. So why would you want to come down here and work during science? Well, I usually don't. Okay. But during the other, but during the other subjects, it's the uh, same thing. Um, what makes Spark a good break space? Because it's not in the classroom. All right, so that was Rory Hutchinson and one of his students in the Spark Center. Oh, sorry about that. Let's go back to present. Okay, and then this is our transition program. I... So we're hearing the online people can't hear the audio. Okay. Hello, I would like to introduce you to the Transition Academy at U32. The Transition Academy at U32 is a results-oriented program focusing on improving the academic and functional achievement of local Vermont students with disabilities to facilitate their movement from school to post-school activities and provide connections to post-secondary education, integrated employment, including supported employment, and continuing adult education initiated by the Washington Central Unified Union School District. We have recently partnered with Central Vermont Medical Center to foster community-based job training and education for the U32 community. One of the tenets of the transition program and Central Vermont Medical Center's philosophy is supporting individuals with social emotional learning or SEL. SEL can be used to help students in developing social awareness, problem solving, and critical thinking skills. It can help students learn to understand themselves and others. Having me in the hospital, I get to get to learn job skills and meet new people. Through the transition program, we focus on students working on the process through which they can effectively apply the knowledge attitudes and skills necessary to understand and manage emotions, set and achieve positive goals, feel and show empathy for others, establish and maintain positive relationships, and make responsible decisions. I like getting used to being in a workplace and having a routine to work to. All right, so that was John Boyd with a couple of his students. Um, and then we move into affinity groups. Oh, God, let me get rid of that. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so we have two affinity groups. We have GLAM, which is the Black, Latino, Asian, and many more. And then we have GLAM, which is the Gay, Lesbian, and many more. So we have a video from our GLAM students. Eliza, why do you like Blam? It's a great place to be where you're in a group of people who all know your experiences. Uh, I like Blam because I have a lot of friends in Blam. Um, the reason I like coming to Blam is because I enjoy the shared experiences that we have. I like Blam because I get to talk about stuff that they would understand. I like that I get to connect with other BIPOC youth and that I also get to um, educate other kids on why racism is bad and how you can or what you can do to like make a change in the community. I like that in Blam I can discuss racial issues with other people of color in the school. Uh, I like hearing um, from students of color around the building and their shared experiences, um, brainstorming how we can make their experience better, and just building community. I, I like it. Okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> so Zach Gonzalez is one of the three <laughs> advisors for Blam. Ooh, I don't know why it keeps jumping out of present mode. 
Okay, and then we have the pep squad. So there's pictures here on the right, right, of some of the activities from the pep squad. And we want to thank Chris D for those photos. Mm -hmm. Then we jump into layer two supports, right? So we have uh, TA circles to address student needs. And then we also have restorative classroom circles. So this next video is two of our teachers. One of them is Annika DeVries, and one is Sarah Lund talking about circles that the um, that people have run for them for their full classrooms. I used a restorative practice circle earlier in semester one of this year. Um, I had a group of, I had a class that was pretty rowdy and despite having had initial conversation at the beginning of the year about expectations and what does it look like for learning to happen and what do students and teachers need to do in order for learning to happen, I still had a pretty um, sizable group of students who were regularly disruptive and making learning difficult. So just after trying things on my own, I reached out to Ellen and she facilitated a, an RP circle within class where individuals within the, within the class were able to voice what they needed for learning to happen successfully. And interestingly, everyone, even the disruptive students all mentioned wanting a calmer, quieter environment. So the RP circle helped everyone have a voice in what they needed. Um, and then we worked as a class to figure out how do we, including myself, um, have that happen. So as a group, we decided on here are set things that when I notice students being disruptive, we'll be able to, to sort of work through. Um, and I would say definitely from that point forward, there was there was a de-escalation in disruptiveness and um, it felt like everyone sort of had better understanding at that point. Um, my experience with an RP circle came last year and was for a different reason. Um, I had a group of students who had started saying some um, harmful comments um, in class um, and so I it completely disrupted the class and made a lot of students feel unsafe and unwelcomed. Um, so I called for an RP circle and I actually had Lisa and Ellen come and help administer mine. Um, and it was very useful in the sense that everyone got to have a voice and even those that didn't feel comfortable speaking up in the moment when that situation had happened, um, they felt more comfortable doing so during the circle time. Um, after the circle, it gave me better insight into maybe why the students felt like they had the right to say the things they were saying and maybe that where that was coming from, but then also it let the students and helped the students to be more understanding and respectful to one another. So ultimately it helped um, the environment and the atmosphere within my classroom to be a little bit more accepting um, for overall for everyone. Thanks. All right, and then we talked about the RISE space, right? So students um, use that space um, at a layer two piece. And then we have a brave class that's happening in our middle school in the eighth grade. And so Tony Snow. Hi, my name is Tony Snow and I'm the RISE coordinator here at U32. I also teach the BRAVE course. BRAVE stands for Building Resilience, Academic Values, and Empathy. This class supports six eighth grade boys who have 126 write-ups among them. Every day, we take a moment to reflect on a question, have a group discussion, and then begin working on a project. The projects that students choose work towards a short or long-term goal to improve their school community. We do too much in this course to cover in one minute, but the greatest value this course provides is the opportunity through intentional moments to let students learn to support each other in authentic ways. In regards to the RP questions, I, I was remiss in showing you. So the questions in the right-hand corner are the questions that we use 
when we have restorative circles, right? So what happened? What were you thinking about at the time? What have you thought about since? Who's been affected? And then what do you need to make things right or to move forward? So in addition for layer two supports um, with Jamie, who's our social worker, she's working really hard um, to work with community partners. So we do have two groups going right now. There's a substance abuse use prevention group with Elevate Youth Services, and there's a fireside after school uh, uh, program with community mentors. She's also going to be starting some parent workshops in the next uh, in the next month or so. And then we move to layer three supports, right? These are more one on one uh, at a higher level, right? So oh, did you skip one? Did I skip? Oh, I did. I am so sorry. I skipped a huge one. <laughs> Approaching to supporting student behaviors. And if I have to figure out how to get you this you to escape, escape. You all right. Yeah, and this is right. a video that JB and Jess put together. And I also would be remiss if I didn't share, and Amy is going to shoot me daggers from the back. Um, <laughs> she's like <laughs> cracking her neck. She's not already. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Happen, yeah, it is. So hang on for one second before I play that. Um, she's working with, there's a eighth grade student um, who definitely has some struggles in school academically and um, athletically. So not sure how many of you know, she's really gonna shoot me daggers. But Amy, when, um, when we were all younger, um, tried out for the Olympic basketball team, made it all the way to the last cut for the women's basketball team. Um, so has some mad skill. So she's been working <laughs> Sunday mornings with this student um, and the dad that comes in, teaching him how to um, learn some skills so that he can find some success in the gym. She also spends lots of her callbacks <coughs> with him, right, to help him stay on track in regards to his academics. And there's teachers who have noticed significant difference based on since Amy's actually been working with him. And then this is Jess and JB um, talking about uh, supportive um, discipline in the building. So let's see if I can make this. We work collaboratively to address the needs of all students within all layers of behavioral interventions. We have spent a lot of time reflecting on what we do and what message we may want to share with you all about how we approach our work and our values. A critical aspect of that work is building relationships with students so we can effectively support student growth in academic success and social emotional development. We empower them to make responsible choices, understand consequences, and develop the resilience to overcome setbacks. In doing so, we prepare them for a future where adaptability and perseverance are invaluable assets. Social emotional learning refers to the process through which individuals develop and apply the skills necessary to understand and manage emotions, set and achieve positive goals, feel and show empathy for others, establish and maintain positive relationships, and make responsible decisions. It's not just about academic achievement. It's about equipping our students with the tools they need to navigate the complex and interconnected world beyond the classroom. Discipline, on the other hand, is often misunderstood as a punitive measure. However, true discipline goes hand in hand with SEL, creating a foundation for a harmonious and productive learning environment. It is about instilling self-control, responsibility, and a sense of accountability for our students. When discipline is approached positively and combined with social emotional learning, it becomes a powerful force for personal and collective growth. The positive approach is highlighted in a recent interview we did with a student. She said, the tone is different. You guys tell me to get to class and are kind about it. We are all teenagers and we will mirror the energy that we are given. We strive to always approach students with empathy, kindness, and an open mind to understanding their perspective and experience. Incorporating SEL into our educational framework is more critical than ever. The challenges our students face extend far beyond textbooks and exams. They grapple with the complexities of diverse social interaction, emotional highs and lows, and technology. 
SEL provides them with the emotional intelligence needed to navigate these challenges successfully. We foster a school where students not only excel academically, but also exhibit empathy, teamwork, and resilience. Through SEL, we foster an inclusive environment that values diversity and encourages collaboration. We use the Humanity and Justice Coalition statement to improve our discipline approach and practices. This approach prepares our students for the realities of the workforce, where interpersonal skills and emotional intelligence are increasingly becoming pre prerequisites for success. We have committed to integrating social and emotional learning and positive discipline into the fabric of our day-to-day -day work at U32. By doing so, we not only enhance academic achievement, but also cultivate the essential skills that will empower our students to navigate the challenges of the 21st century with intelligence, compassion, and resilience. So you can see through a couple of these pictures, the fun times of um, them getting pied in the face. <laughs> JB has been lucky enough to be pied, as has Jess. <laughs> Luckily, Lisa has you not. You always win that competition. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's the 20 bucks I put into the bucket. <laughs> or, me, or me helping out, too. All right, so um, layer three supports, right, are one-on-one -on -one meetings with administrators, with TAs, with their teachers, with the school social worker, with Tony, and then Jamie also working with interventions with students and families. So huge thanks, right, to all of these people who made videos, who made videos when Lisa said it needs to be under a minute. We only have so much time. No, it's too long. Can you redo it? So I can't say enough to, um, to thank them for everything that they do on a day-to-day -day basis and for being willing to put themselves out there to show you this. Okay. And with that, are there any questions? All right. Well, thank you for your time. No questions. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, sure. Have you noticed any change in student behaviors over the over years um, now that more social emotional learning techniques are being used? I have. Um, students are definitely more willing to come in and have hard conversations. They're more willing to sit with each other and use the, I mean, we've been doing RP now for 10, even yeah, 10 years? So nine. Nine. So nine years. So nine years, right? So when Stephen got here, um, thankfully, we uh, introduced him to RP and he immediately jumped on board, saw the need. Um, so yeah, in the past nine years, I've definitely seen students be able to have harder conversations than they, than they used to have. They can come in, they can sit, they can get to the heart of what's really the issue. Oftentimes with students, it's, it's, it's people who were friends who then something happened. Mm -hmm. um, and when you can get them in a room and have conversations with them ahead of time to do the prep work, um, they can come in and they can be vulnerable and they can really talk about, you know, six years ago, we were best friends. Something happened and now we're here mm -hmm. and we really miss each other. So, yeah, thank you. You're welcome. I have a comment. Sure. Um, one other thing. I'm not sure if this would be like, exactly in the same category but we also do like peer mentoring mm -hmm. and i'm a mentor i have um a mentee and she is moving away but um i've been working her with her since seventh grade and it's been really fun to get to know her and just like help her with her homework and like draw with her during callbacks so that's just another example of yeah, we probably have yeah, 40 or 45 cool. high school mentors who are paired with 7th and 8th graders, and we do try to pair um, the 11th graders with 7th graders, so that they or the 10th graders, so that they can stay with them for two years. Mm -hmm. And we were going to have a video from somebody who was a peer, who was a mentee, who is now a mentor. Um, unfortunately, he's been out sick, and so we weren't able to put that, that together. So thank you, Linnea, for bringing that up. All right, thank you all for your time. Thanks, Jason. Thank you.
thank you, you 32. Please thank everybody that contributed. And thank you for dinner. It's delicious. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna move into our superintendent search update, and I'm gonna welcome both Mike and Jeannie to our to our meeting and let them walk us through where we are. Yeah. Uh, thank you, um, Mark. Can you enable screen sharing once again? Yes. Perfect, thank you. Okay, hello. <laughs> um, thank you all very much for letting us join you tonight. I am Jean Collins Dewees, one half of Dewees 2 Consulting. And um, for those of you who don't yet know me, I am a recently retired Vermont superintendent, 17 years as superintendent in two districts in Vermont currently working as a consultant with school boards, superintendents, um, and um, a mentoring administrators in the state of Vermont. Good evening. It's uh, good to see some familiar faces. Uh, for those whom I haven't met, I'm Mike DeWeese, also a retired Vermont superintendent. For about a decade, I did run the uh, Superintendent Association Leadership Academy, which worked with uh, aspiring superintendents over year-long groups. And uh, my work has been uh, specifically with school boards and superintendents in my consulting role in Vermont. Um, as we go through this, we recognize how busy your agenda is tonight, and it might be more efficient if we just left questions for the uh, for the end. The uh, shared expectations might be a good place for us to start. Uh, we're seeing small pools uh, for the existing uh, vacancies, not unfamiliar to you. You saw the same situation a couple of years ago. Your timing for the search is good. It's not great, but it's good. Uh, there are probably half a dozen searches that we're aware of existing across the state now. Uh, probably many, if not most of those, will be done before yours is done. Uh, but that's not a problem necessarily. Uh, we're just looking, obviously, not for a bunch of superintendents. You're looking for your one next superintendent. We don't exactly know if it's going to be a high year of vacancies. It may be. Uh, we're running roughly 10% vacancy rate right now across the state, but uh, there could be some superintendent positions jockeying uh, district to district, and certainly that could be uh, something to your advantage if, uh, if that were to be the case with your pool. Uh, the market hasn't changed since your last experience doing this. It certainly still is a seller's market, uh, which drives compensation conversations, and I know that you're aware of that. Vermont still enjoys about uh, 250 folks who are holding the license endorsement for superintendent. Uh, it'd be wonderful if all applied. I'm not sure all will, but uh, that's the, the current number. Clearly in your favor is your district's reputation for all reasons that you're aware of and uh, for all good reasons, and, and that's uh, certainly uh, a good thing. We don't pretend there's a perfect candidate out, candidate out there. We're still looking for the best match, and that's uh, all, always situational. And, and certainly you've heard this from me before, perhaps, and that is the success of the new superintendent is in the interest of the district. And that starts now in this process as we move into it. The role um, that we're gonna play is that uh, we're crystal clear that our work is in service to you, the board. Uh, what we'll do is help manage the process steps. We'll help ensure that things are tidy and legal. Uh, we will work transparently. Uh, our communication with the board will be through your liaison. Um, some of our work will be in person, some will be remote, and uh, we're going to strive to provide you with multiple finalists uh, for the board's consideration at the end of the process. One thing we're not is we're not headhunters. Uh, we're not going to be out there selecting your next superintendent. That's not our job. That's your job. So let's talk for a minute about your role in the process. Ultimately, you, the board, employs the new superintendent. Um, we don't, the committee doesn't. Um, that's that's your authority and your role. Along the way, you also will be working to make sure that your actions as a board are fair and square and legal. And the a, 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 a key part of success of this process is a screening and inter interview committee, which will do which will work on behalf of the board to bring you finalist candidates. So we have recommended for action by you tonight, a uh, charge to support the work and guide the work of that screening and interview committee. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go along. It's also important that you, as well as the screening and interview committee, consider stakeholders input. And we'll talk a little bit more about where we are in that process in a minute. 
And uh, we ask that you be available and committed to interviewing the finalists on March 27th. That's the date that we have um, picked and put in the posting. And finally, we ask that you trust the process. So what has happened so far? Um, so far, uh, with Floor's quick action, we have um, gotten the consent of the Secretary of Education, which is a requirement under Vermont state law that the Secretary of Education has to approve superintendent searches. With the able help of Heidi and her department, Posting and advertising has happened across a number of sites. Primarily, we are using SchoolSpring as that is the most commonly known um, education administration or education opening site. But in addition, we have identified about seven or eight other sites that we have been, that Heidi has posted and advertised on, and we're already seeing results of one or two of those. We have put out a survey recruiting volunteers for the screening and interview committee. And we will, we already have 16 responses to that. And that survey is not yet closed if anybody is interested in that. And we have put out a thought exchange to the community staff, students and parents to collect community input on what they'd like to see in their next superintendent. And all of this, the posting, the survey for recruitment, the community input, I believe is on a web page that has been designed by the district to help keep the community informed along the way of the process as well. I did touch for just a second on the um, screening and interviewing committee. And you again, you do have a handout in your packet about this committee and the committee charge. The board will have a place on this committee as well. Uh, we're trying to create a very broad-based but relatively manageable size committee, um, as Mike had done two years ago when he did the last search for you. So you can look at that handout and get some more information on that. It is our anticipation that the steering committee of the board appoint the screening and interview committee members next Wednesday on February 14th. Moving along in the process timeline, on Monday the 19th will be a busy night as the screening and interview committee assembles for the first time. And uh, for that agenda, that group will be organizing, getting to know one another. Uh, we're going to have a conversation about lawful hiring practices. We're going to discuss the necessity for confidentiality. Uh, folks will have a chance to manage and be sure that they're facile with the school spring technology and how to how to maneuver that. Uh, we're going to spend time on the board charge to be sure that uh, that guidance is is clear to all the members of the committee. We'll uh, strike out our calendar and be sure that we're all clear on, on what lies ahead for the committee. Uh, and perhaps most importantly, we'll leave that night uh, starting to have the committee screen your paper people, your paper applicants. The deadline. Um, actually, previous slide there. Thanks. Previous the deadline is going to be on Sunday, March third. We're asking that uh, folks uh, submit their applications by then. Uh, certainly, those who do will get preferential consideration in this process. The date was chosen intentionally. Um, we find uh, through our experience that uh, superintendent applicants really need a, a good weekend or sometimes even vacation time to put together their best uh, application and set their best foot forward. So March 3rd, Sunday, uh, is the last date of the last vacation week for Vermont school superintendents. And uh, that's the reason we set that application deadline. So as you can tell, the screening committee will be working through that period to uh, ensure that they have a chance to screen all those applicants that have come through through that deadline date. The um, screen and interview committee will then reassemble on Wednesday, March 6th, uh, day after town meeting. And uh, that work will really be about debriefing their findings, uh, how it is they assessed the paper people, um, what the reviews were, good give and take of, of their observations and assessments. And that will be the evening or the day that the committee will uh, determine who the first subgroup of folks uh, to be interviewed will be. And we're going to refer to those folks as semifinalists. Um, those semifinalists will be in later in the month, um, but that'll be the night that uh, the paper applications are done, moving from the point of paper people to real people um, that uh, will be interviewed by the screen interview committee. 
So we have identified the date of Monday, March 18th for a semi-finalist interview. And that those interviews will be done by the Screen and Interview Committee. Again, they are doing their work on behalf of the board according to your charge. So that saves you from having to do all of that work. Um, it is it is our intention that you they will identify multiple semifinalists, unranked, um, that will be interviewed on that day. And it depends on the number of finalists to know exactly how long those interviews will take. I One of us will be on site for that day. We feel that that's one of the important days that we need to be face-to-face uh, -face and present as opposed to the committee meetings. So one of us will be on site for that entire day and through that entire process. At the end of that day, we will be debriefing with the screen and interview committee with the intention of identifying one or more finalists, unranked, that would then be forwarded to the board for a finalist interview day. Between that semi-finalist interview day and the finalist interview day, there's a very small window of time. And it is our hope that we will be able to identify, or the committee will be able to identify some external site visits to finalist districts, both locally and regionally. We will. We do not anticipate being able to do that for out of state districts. And so that's why we say it's possible external site visits. The very next week, Wednesday, March 27th, will be the gauntlet day. We call it that because that's, Megan can maybe speak to this, but that's what it feels like <laughs> going through the process. It's a, it's a very, very full day. And the finalists who do come forward on that day will spend the day touring the district, meeting students and staff, have participating in public forums with staff, public forums with parents and community, and then an interview with the board. And following the finalist interviews with the board, the board then will continue on to determine if uh, who you would like to offer the position to. The interview, we can't guarantee what time the interviews with the board will start. It really depends on what time, um, or I'm sorry, it really depends on how many finalists we are bringing forward so that you have appropriate time for both the interviews and the debriefing. And again, one of us will be on site for that day, face-to-face, um, -face, helping to manage all of it and um, with you all the way through to the end. I think Mike mentioned at 2 a.m., ending last time, but we're hoping not to do that this time. <laughs> if you'd really like to, we'll be there, but. It's <laughs> one gift we'd like to give you is uh, not to be deliberating too late into the evening. So that will help determine, as Jean said, uh, the start time of that, uh, that <laughs> meeting. So Floor, I, I think as uh, we understand it, there are a couple of things the board can do to help us uh, keep the process moving. Uh, one is to uh, approve the board charge to the screening interview committee. And uh, secondly, to um, be sure that the board can commit to the March 27th finalist interview date. Um, so mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll let you just uh, let us know how you want to manage that uh, those decision points for the board tonight. Yeah, that's great. Thank you, Mike. Uh, do you want to stop your share so that people can see you both in the screen right now? There you go. Oh, yeah. And you could even make it speaker, Mark. Okay, great. Oh, perfect. Now we can see you. Great. So any any clarifying questions? And I think there's a couple of things that I might need to clarify, but this theory. Yeah, go ahead, Diane. Um, is there, and I realize it might be the screening and interview team that will make this decision, but do you anticipate that you'll be able to interview virtually as well? Or will it all be expected um, to be in person? It's a very good question. Yes. Um, especially at the semi-finalist level, I think a virtual interview should be an, um, a possibility. However, at the finalist level, we anticipate having um, candidates come in if they at all can, but we can discuss if there are issues with somebody at that time. And again, the posting um, that went out does include these dates. So candidates applying already know them. They're not going to have short notice of when the dates are. Any other questions? No. Go ahead, Kelly. Can you talk about how or where the interview and selection committee survey went out? Like how people are able to access that? I didn't see it. Before. Yeah, we 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 posted it and we're gonna post it again. It went to all families in in. Uh, oh, I just it. Okay. But it should have been to all parents, all family. If anybody in our district should have received it, so I love that. Yeah. 
Okay. And then I shared it with you guys on my email update when I did the update and I showed the, the letter from the uh, interim secretary and I had all of, and and the letter that and went out yes. I had the it had the link to for for the that exchange and also the link for the for all of this information and the website and I said in the website too there's yeah. a link to all of that so you can go in our website into the left corner there's a button for that and I also wanted to get an opportunity to introduce I'll let her introduce herself and we're grateful to have her as part of our team hi hi everyone I'm Heidi Dimmick I'm the director of HR happy to be working with Mike and Jeannie and all of you on this search so and then if just a little clarification on dates we had to move quickly as you know so and we wanted to make sure that we posted all these dates so so we you know we brainstorm and we sat together with Jeannie and Mike and, and Heidi and uh, collaborated with the, with Melissa and, and Megan to make sure that we were not going to be creating conflict within the district on dates, right? And so that it, it worked for, for, every, for everybody. And then we're taking advantage of March where we have very little because our meeting was not until the 13th and for reorganization. So we had a little bit more flexibility on on March to be able to get this work get this work done and the idea of having the steering committee appoint the committee is because the steering committee meets in the morning but it's already represents the board and in order to not have to bring the entire board together again to appoint a committee of course you're welcome to send us your input but that was that was the idea so with that if there's no other questions I will oh, Daniel just curious about the is are there recommendations around the composition of the screening and interview committee or is it just we we listed it there do you have any uh, it's in page four so we what we try to do is very similar to what we had last year so it's one student uh, two parents or citizens you know they don't have to be parents could be not have kids in school uh, we were suggesting uh, one person from central office uh, faculty and staff a uh, three because they would decide if it's you know a union you know like a union member a teacher you know you guys decide how that's going to be uh, and then leadership team mm -hmm. uh, that's what we had let's say two people from the leadership team and a uh, and board so well, would that be someone from central office who's not on the leadership as well. Correct. So it would be some that yeah, yeah, somebody that works directly with the superintendent that is not related to yeah. So could we get a sense uh, from board members who are interested so that at least the same many of those who would or may not be interested in serving from the yeah. board, board members. Yeah. We can, we can can we if you're okay with this, oh, because yeah. then you might want to adjust that. Is that what you're no, thinking? No, 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 just to, so that the steering committee knows who may or may not want to work on the committee before they're, they're selecting. Board okay. members who are interested in serving can say, yeah, I'd like to do that. So the steering committee knows who, who is interested in doing it from the board. Oh, okay. That's, that's, that's okay. Yeah, no, that, yeah, that's okay. I yeah. was wondering if if you wanted it to no, see no. we wanted more no, board members. So it's just like, nice. okay, sounds yeah sounds good is, is are there are there volunteers for this screening committee you know besides yeah there's a, yeah and attach it to yeah so but if other people wanted to do it i wouldn't take a spot away from somebody else i mean you know what i'm saying yeah, I no, I think that that's uh, that's fine. And then the only consideration is like I, I don't see how not to do it. <laughs> so, so that's the, yeah. the the only consideration. But we can talk about it out of the the screen. Okay. Wait, sorry. Did did Ursula and we are not appointing today, but we right. have a sense of, of who wants to expression of interest or to have expression of interest. Yes. More than two, we can figure it out. Yeah, exactly. Does that make sense? So everybody, I, I, what I would like to do today is exactly what Jeannie and Mike were suggesting that we approve the charge of the committee. Is yeah. that so? Could I have a motion mm -hmm. to approve the charge of the committee as stated on page so four? Second. Okay. So, Lisa, do you get that? Diane and Chris. Any more discussion? Oh. Just one other question, and I'm, I apologize because I clearly am getting up to speed still. But um, yeah. 
is the expectation that there be two and exactly two finalists coming out of the screening and interview committee? We don't know we, until we have. So we we will bring viable candidates similar to what we did the last time. We would not bring forward uh, two candidates if they're not both viable, right? That we think it fits. And I don't want to speak for you. Mike and Jeannie, you should speak to this. No, you're absolutely correct. I mean, it's we will bring forward any viable candidates. It's not locked to two. There might be three. There might oh, be four. Um, and it, there might be one. One, yeah. So one of our unfortunate experiences uh, recently was that we, the board said, bring three viable candidates. Uh, the search committee sent two, and then one dropped out, so we were left with one and not a choice at all, really. Um, so I would hope that we would get at least three just because, and you, you talked about a little bit about the competition amongst districts for superintendents. If we have two and one drops out um, because they have another position, then we're left with a choice of one, really. And that's not a choice, um, really. So if we could get at least settle on three viable candidates so that we have an overflow, um, so I think if, just to explain the process from before, it would be premature for us to have that requirement because we don't know how, so we can we can strive for that. So exactly. I think what we're saying is that we're striving to bring as many as there are viable candidates that would fit all of the criteria that we put out. So if there's a candidate that doesn't fit that criteria, we wouldn't be bringing it forward because we'd rather go back and and post again, again, then bring you a third candidate that doesn't fit that request, right? Are we all in agreement on that? Yeah, yeah I, I think what I hear you saying, Chris, is just as a historical perspective, um, it has been challenging in the past when there were only two candidates and then it dwindled down to one. And so just as a historical perspective, but absolutely trusting the charge of, of the committee and what they do. Ursula, that's in the session. Okay. Um, having served on the committee the last time we did this, um, I think that it helped not feeling like we had to pick a specific number of candidates. Like we went in, we reviewed the applications, we discussed them, and we had a set of criteria. And it was either yes, they can move on, or no, and not like let's find the three best to move on, right? Like even if they didn't quite meet. We didn't have to feel like we were doing that, like we were trying to fill a quota. Mm -hmm. so the question then is if, and this for um, Michael and, and Jean as well, if you think there are no viable candidates, would you say that? Yes. Absolutely. Okay. Good. Because I mean, that's, you know, we're, we're in kind of in a pressure situation to have a superintendent. I mean, I'm happy with an interim if we don't have a good viable candidate. Mm -hmm. Um, so anyway, thank you for, for that question. Yeah. <laughs> just, just as you know, it's not a viable option, but it's just like, just to protect our, our, our curriculum director and don't give her a heart attack today. It, it, sorry, Natasha, you um, Did I hear you say, I think it was under faculty and staff, um, Something about having a, a union representative who said that he decided is that right? No, they will decide. You know, like they're okay. not not you, but the staff and the, it, those three spots include somebody from the union. Is our thinking? Okay, that that's what I just was going to say. We don't. Care they care don't decide from, from the union, everyone. but there's three <laughs> spots. There's three spots for the staff. Okay, I, so, I just wanted to clarify that one of those spots will be. Yes. by somebody who represents the union. Correct. Well, okay. Is staff self-selecting? That's how we've done it yeah, in the yeah. past. So been... It's truly going to be up to the staff, who they take. But one of them Could will be. be a union rep. I don't think that's Could criteria. It, we can we, we, say it is. We in the can, past, we have we usually, usually do had it. the association suggest yes. somebody who should be on there. Okay. Yeah. I, mean, I, mean, I, I think it just, should be a criteria. Yeah. I mean, yes. Yeah. If um, we wanted well, to we were assuming we were assuming that that was a criteria. Same. That's sort of how we we work. Okay. But I'm so that's why I mention it. Yeah. Well, I, I will put on record. I think it should be a criteria. We, and we are. I think we're all in agreement. I, I keep pointing this way just because yeah, so like, that that not you not you but. I, yeah, uh, yeah, thank you, Amy. <laughs>
I would just say Jeannie and Mike would have the ability to look at the list of teachers they received in the survey, check with Heidi to make sure there's an association member. So yeah. we'd, be, we'd have a loop to be able to make sure that you okay. do that. Yeah. Okay. So uh, all those in favor, oh, you have a question. Uh, well, I would also suggest that if there was a great deal of student interest that we consider having more than one student. Um, yeah, and and that would be that would be great. We moved up to one this year, and I will let Jeannie and Mike talk about this uh, because last the, the last time around we put a lot of pressure on our students, and we could just we could barely get one. That is just a lot of time commitment away. So I think I could definitely push some people to. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. I don't think you. Okay. So we can change that to two students. <laughs> I just wanted to add that I think doing the, the site visits was really good because my son was in elementary school when this happened and he came home and had all sorts of things to tell me about the candidates. <laughs> um, so I think it, I think that was really yeah. good. It was really good for the yeah. students at all levels to be able to be a part of that process. Yeah. Yeah. It's also a really important experience for the candidate, frankly. Mm -hmm. Really glad you mentioned that. that. And as we think of it, there are uh, two kinds of site visits. One would be the site visit that you're going to be hosting, where the finalists are coming to Washington Central and, and have their experience with you as part of the gauntlet day. The other one Gene spoke to is the outbound um, experience, where uh, if we've got some screen interview committee members who can volunteer and be interested to go out to those finalist districts where they're working now and, and just get a little different perspective, a little different uh, peek into uh, their work and how they're perceived and, and, and so forth in their districts. That was a valuable contribution last time to the process as well. Any more questions? Otherwise, so all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Okay. Any, thank you, Jonathan. Any abstain? <laughs> So the charge has passed. Mm -hmm. uh, and the last one, I don't think we need a formal motion or unless you want to make a formal motion, but maybe let's make a formal motion that the, the day that we would, mm -hmm. uh, the final is March 27th. I move that our final gauntlet day is March 27th. Uh, Ursula and Chris? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All those in favor, <clears throat> please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Hearing none, the motion carries. So, thank you, everybody. Uh, we will post uh, that letter again on Front Porch Forum uh, today, hopefully. And uh, um, and then we'll keep you informed with the next with, with the next steps. Okay. All right. With that, I'm gonna let you take over tonight. So as we know, um, Willow is not here, and we I would like to speak for both of us. We are sorry that we've not been here. Um, I'll start off by saying um, this is February, it's Black History Month, so we start out the week um, <clears throat> just like acknowledging and like celebrating that. Um, we've also started a new semester recently, um, and we I think. Um, we haven't, we did Yes Week, which I don't think we've talked about. It's where, um, our students get to, well, students get to choose, um, like a few things that interest them. So we can do like, for example, I did volunteering in early elementary schools and baking. I know some people that did skiing. There was like ice skating and a bunch of cool things that we were offered to do. Um, also sports seasons are slowly coming to an end so we're coming up on playoffs which is exciting um <clears throat> our model un group went to boston which is super cool they did great um and then last tuesday we had a parent night which is for um like incoming seventh graders um and so the parents get to come and see the school um they didn't get to meet their kids this night or that night, but um, they're gonna come again, hopefully. Um, today we left school early because there was a water main break, as you all <laughs> probably heard. Um, 
Uh, I only have a few more things, so come on, Gloria. Um, we also had a Winooski Valley Jazz Company come and perform, which is cool. Um, and then Pink the Rink, which is the hockey team's um, like cancer awareness game, raised seven thousand dollars, which wow. is wow. really wow. cool. Um, and then also um, we're starting for juniors at least like early college applications. So students that are studying at Norwich or CCV are starting to apply, which is also pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Any questions about any of that? Any questions mm -hmm. for Linnea? I mean, my question for the comments is since you were here last year, I just want to say thank you for setting up the, the day when we had come to visit classes. I found that really valuable. Yeah, of course. And if you guys are interested in doing that again, of course, just like let us know when we do that one. Thank you for the card, too. Okay. So we're going to move into thank you for being here tonight. Sorry. And of course, you're welcome to stay or you're welcome. And I'm, we're sorry that. The game was lost today, too. Yeah. We feel your pain. Yeah. Okay. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's refreshed, right? <laughs> so I'm going to move into our finance part, and I'm looking for a motion from one of my finance committee members on the Berlin Fire Alarm Panel Bid Awards, which I do, Ursula. I move that the board approve awarding the Berlin Fire Alarm System Replacement Project contract to Local Electric LLC and amount not to exceed $72,804. Thank you, Ursula. Second. Second. Thank you, Zach. Any questions? Seeing none, all of those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Sorry, aye. aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Hearing none, the motion carries. Thank you, everybody. Now, 5.2, we added an Act 127 update. It, we sent you a lot of information last night. We included the link from the hearing. What uh, uh, Megan and I had had a chance to briefly talk about the plan for tonight, and we thought that we would go through the three scenarios just briefly, just what they were thinking, but then concentrate on what they were doing tonight. And now, well, she starts talking. Mm -hmm. I'll pass those uh, papers around, and then we'll make a decision. I'll try to give the executive summary and then you can ask questions um, because people have probably heard various bits or you've read about it or, or if you did tune in on the hearings. Um, the legislature is wrestling with the potential implications of Act 127 because of the number of districts, which actually is nearly all districts in Vermont now hit the cap, um, which uh, presents three possible things that they see as happening and so they have crafted legislation with an option that they feel is the best one and then we'll talk about that in a second the draft is what you're looking at um, essentially the concern is that um, if budgets pass in their current form with the cap as it is it actually will cause tax rates to be even higher than projected because more districts even than uh, three weeks ago when we adopted our budget, which was the case, even more are hitting the cap. Um, and that will just be a budget that we presented to communities that they've supported, and then they will get a really unexpected tax increase, and it will sort of foster mistrust in the process. Um, another scenario that the legislature is concerned about is that budgets fail on a large scale. And if budgets fail and the cap is still in place, the amount of reduction that would, it, that would um, be needed to actually change tax rates is really significant because, and we are a good example, we are very high above the tax rate, which means to get below the tax cap, if, if it doesn't change, would be large scale cuts. The concern is that budgets would actually continue to fail. And then many districts would be into that place where they start July 1 and you are at just about 90% of your this year's budget, which is a catastrophic amount of reduction. Neither of those two scenarios um, feels viable to the legislature. So they are proposing and have since crafted draft legislation that essentially eliminates the 5% cap. It creates a mechanism to calculate um, districts who have lost in long-term weighted ADM and and creates a different protection mechanism for those districts so the five percent cap would go away it would be replaced with a um 
basically a calculation related to how many students they lost. And then that tax rate would translate in, or sorry, that uh, reduction would translate into cents off your tax rate, and then it would decrease over the next five years. I could get into the mechanics of the calculation, but it's really not important for our district because we will not qualify for that because we've gained in long-term weighted ADM. So if this legislation goes through the cap, we are not eligible for either protection. Um, and that's pretty clear in the legislation. Also in this legislation, and this is new, we didn't have this even when finance committee met yesterday. Um, they now also have given boards a mechanism in this legislation that it would allow you to choose to rewarn your budget. You would essentially cancel your warning and choose a different vote date. Um, your warning could go through with everything but the budget number if you chose. Um, and then they put a small allocation in to pay for the costs associated with that. For us, we would have to reprint ballots is probably our biggest cost. We tried very hard to wait as long as we could to print the ballot. We couldn't. It had to go to the print as is because it's a little unclear as to whether or not we can make a decision. Um, the only thing I'd reiterate before happy to answer questions and floor can fill in the blanks. <clears throat> this is draft legislation. Yeah. They are very compelled to pass this. It still requires everything it takes for a bill to become a law, right? So this is um, what you have today is is draft. It's not law yet. Yeah, and I, I would, you know, that that was the point that I was going to make. Even though it's moving quickly, it, we still, you know, it would take it, when we were yesterday at the hearing. It's going to take at least two and a half weeks to go just through the house and then to be at Senate and then to have the governor sign it. So. So we might not have even enough information when we meet as the finance committee next day, next Tuesday, but this at least provides us with the mechanism which we were kind of looking for maybe taking out just article six, right? Our ballots have gone to print because the deadline was today. We kept holding them yesterday and it was just like, if they needed to go uh, to print, we can then file for some funds. We are still holding our trifle. So at least in that trifle, we would be able to say, hey, this is what happened. Even if you vote, we're going to have to rewarn our our budget. But we, I, I know that you guys probably have a lot of questions. Our thinking today after we met with the finance committee was not to spend as much time thinking about like, why did Act 127, you know, like I think we all support the equity parts of Act 127. We don't want to throw away the baby with the water, but we also, and we we wouldn't gain anything about, you know, sort of discussing how long the process taken or the timing or whatever. So it's what we do as a board with the information that we have today, right? So one of the suggestions that, that we had as the, as the finance committee after we discussed is, is to empower the finance committee to, as we start to get information to work and have a commitment from the board that we would have to make some reductions, right? There is no, no other option, but right now it's kind of early to say that that's what we're gonna do either because we don't have the EO yet. We don't have all our counts. Yeah, I'll just say a little more about that last piece. So one of the things that makes this really challenging is we show we did show you numbers about where we look uh, if we didn't have the cap. That's the just over nine percent tax rate impact. The problem is all of those calculations are based on a budget that's built statewide with the cap. Those projections are no longer accurate if this passes, and we really can't tell you what they will look like. Um, and that's difficult. The Just by taking away the number of districts, because remember, when there is a cap and the Ed Fund is receiving less money, everybody's sharing the costs of expenses. And now without a cap, it's your communities who would pay your share. That will, that will impact the yield a little bit. Um, it would also impact the yield if other districts chose to reduce, but none of that do we know. So it's really difficult to give you a ballpark. And the way that um, the chair of the Ways and Means Committee described it is, uh, this has always been true, right? You all control expenses. You it, Other things impact tax rate, but the thread that ties those two things is now very thin and very far apart. Um, so it's, to Floor's point, it, it, it's the board's discussion to say, would we be contemplating a, a changed budget? 
as opposed to here's what we think we should do to the budget because we don't have enough information to give you to inform that. Yeah, and and, and then and to say the same thing in another way is that every district uh, capacity depends on the whole, right? Yeah. So until we have the whole, we don't know what the what what our taxes are, and we don't know what our capacity is because we are all part of this one echo ecosystem. So, uh, you know, at least that if you look at the bill and that last part, at least that gave it a little more direction than than before. I I think as a board, uh, in you know, we all have provided input to them. We made decisions with the best information in good faith with all we had. Uh, Suzanne had run some some numbers for us in what it would mean to cut a hundred thousand dollars. I don't I don't even know that that is uh, accurate right now. So it, don't don't feel like we're suddenly going to cut two point seven million dollars, right? That's not what we're talking about because we don't know what what we need what we need to what we need to cut. But we do need to have and the board. I don't want to speak for all of the finance committee because you guys were there too. But one thought that we had is that we do have to have clarity for our administrators, right? So when this hits and we need to make their decisions, we're gonna have to do decisions quickly. And we have to also not send our administrators just spinning, right? We have to have a commit a commitment to, I'm, I'm gonna let Zach and Kari speak to this because uh, you wanna start, Kari? Go ahead. I mean, and this is something that we talked about. And, you, know, be, you, know, you brought this up. You know, be, be, you know, yeah, but it's also something we talked about a couple, couple of months yeah. ago. Where, you know, is that this is, you know, you know, we certainly can ask, you know, your lead, our leadership to look at what cuts could be made. What would it look like? What would you know, what would education look like in those in that context with the cuts? Um, I think it's real. You know, that's when you talk about that. That creates fear. That you know that. That damages morale. That's those are the sorts of things that we may need to do. But I think we need to be be aware there's a cost to even asking the question. And like, we don't want to ask a question if we're not committed, we're not willing to say, yes, we you know, we're seriously going to consider making these cuts um, you know, when, when the answer comes out. Hi. So uh, to that I would add that <clears throat> sounds like we're not going to look at the numbers that the Committee was presented last night, and because they're not accurate, I think that's that's fine. Trust us that they're really bad. It's, it's significantly worse than what we were talking about before. And I think it's probably important, even if we don't have full faith in these numbers, we won't we won't really know what the yield is for. They are true. true. What, yeah. We have this decision is made, mm -hmm. but to paint some scenarios like yeah. we could we can assume it's going to be somewhere between what we saw yesterday and what we already approved, yeah. Um, yeah. and it's. So I think the key decision for the board is, is there appetite for going back to the drawing board on the budget? And if so, how much are we going to be asking? And you can't answer that without thinking about that and looking at, I think, these scenarios, these numbers of what we're talking about. Because uh, last point, I think the worst case scenario is the budget fails and we can't get it together to get a new budget in place in time for the next school year, which means that we have to operate with this year's budget less 10% exactly. until we figure that out. And that, it would be bad. Yes. Really bad. Yeah, and then one model that we do, I guess one commitment that we could make as a board is that we, the, the one thing that we had plenty of time to discuss, and I know that there was no agreement if, you know, there was no jury agreement was the hundred and eighty two thousand dollars that we added at the last time right that we, we that we added back but that is one that you know it i'm not saying it's easy because it's not easy we made a commitment to 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 put it back but that is one that we have studied right that we that we know that they have given us information on but we also have a commitment as a finance committee and your superintendent and Suzanne that any changes that we'll make we're we want to make them a, a data informed system thinking we don't want to you know just you know we wouldn't be making changes just to cut dollars right that it so how it's impacted the system as a whole a, and we you know we need the one concrete uh, no concrete direction, but it you know concrete information for reductions. Right? So, for example, one hundred eighty-two would be something that 
again, I'm not saying that it's easy, but that we could commit, you know, it's just we're not where we are. So I, again, I, Chris, do you have your hand up? Yeah, or, good, yeah go ahead. When the time is, you know, the time? You went. Is it time for the questions? Yeah, time for okay. the questions. And then you can go after McKenna because I see you guys having you know, there's something. Yeah, I, I'll defer to Heidi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> um, I, uh, so I guess I, I want clarification of the time, potential time yeah. frame yeah. here. Like, if if we were to decide to cancel the vote for town meeting day, like what are we looking at time thing wise for getting a budget together and yeah. warm? So April 15 so is what April 15. Yeah. yeah, but also just think about it. It doesn't sound like we will have enough time right now to uh, maybe miraculously it's gonna happen before March 5th, right? <laughs> that I, 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 it is hard to answer that question, yeah. but what I would say is the, um, if the legislation passed as written, let's just play it out that way, uh, the vote the vote is scheduled on town meeting day. So kind of up until 48 business hours before town meeting day, we could you would be warning a cancellation is, is basically my read of that language. So you have that amount of time to decide. And it can be kind of right up until then, except that ballot printing gets really complicated. Um, I actually don't have information from our ballot printer about how quickly they could turn it around. So we would have to explore that. Um, the law would allow you to do it fairly close to town meeting, but it's got to be before the vote, right? Because the other possibility is that the vote happens and then you, and, and I think the point that Kari is making is it will take time, I would suspect, for you to give us direction and we need that direction before we can do our work to come back to you. And that's true uh, regardless. And I think the point that Kari is making is um, we can either create our own timeline by changing our vote and, and going back and then picking our goal date, or we will be we will have the time after the vote to turn just like you would in any other scenario when a budget has gone down. And, and we have questions for them because we, as we were talking today, it's like if this vote goes through, you know, it, we would still use the other parts of the ballot. All we're doing is canceling one of the articles and then are we print, we're reprinting just one article to vote? I don't know. You would decide. So, yeah, you, we would decide. Exactly so there's right. a lot of decide. like, you know, questions that are not completely answered by 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 this and I yeah no you go ahead no okay. Kelly you had what, no Seth you had sure. I have a question for the decision how you know, you what you know, when we warn you know if, if we postpone and warn another budget how how long before the vote do we have to you know have warned us send ballots out that sort of thing so they're changing that well it, I actually that's a good question that I don't think is clarified in there because statute is 30, 30 days. days yeah it and feels like they didn't change the timeline so that's right. 30 days but we could push the vote out to um april, april, 15th. april 15th so march 15th, 15th would become your deadline yeah yep. and i guess oh sorry oh, i'm just jumping in yeah. i have because i haven't sat down and looked at the calendar and you've done all the math but by the time they pass this yeah. through the house and the senate and that will that be done before march 15th well that we don't we don't we don't know if, if they rush it it can be yeah yeah, yeah. so if they the would, other thing is if it's uh, not it be before town hall. if not they would also need to relax their timeline yeah. they would have to add to this legislation to adjust mm -hmm. that 30 day yeah. yeah and that's what we're hoping to do so they're you know they're, they're still accepting testimony and and they have to change that deadline in order for it to make it possible for we, we're not you know we're not the only district right. yes yeah, so it's the majority of the districts <laughs> Joshua so just to rewind a little bit are we are you asking the board to empower the 
finance committee to do something tonight? Is that the action you're asking for tonight? Yes. And, yes. What, and if you could clarify what that is. So I, I wish I could be a little more clear, but I feel like that the, we should empower the finance com committee to work on reductions and bring those with the administration and bring those reductions. We won't make the final decision, but bring those reductions to the full board. Uh, because of timing, uh, Michaela, uh, Natasha and then Michaela, because Natasha has not So if that's what we're, if that's what we agree to, to allow the finance committee to do, is that in conjunction with not sending our current budget to vote for town hall? Like, are we, are, is that we're going to pause the vote for our budget? Allow the finance committee to work on it and vote on it at a later date. Uh, I'm going to ask part of that. that. Correct. Yes. Um, we can't. We got the legislation. This is all contingent yes. on this yes. legislation. Yes. Exactly. All these plans that are contingent yes. on the legislature saying we're going to push off. You're not going to vote on town meeting. We're going to push it off until April 15th or whatever yes. that day is, um, because we've already voted and it's already been sent and it's, it'll, Correct. Yes. it's in process. And they're trying to stop that process. You don't have a mechanism to do it until they pass it. You could signal intent to do that and set some work in motion. And then we come back to kind of a really important point that administration would just reiterate, which is it should not be a simulation or an exercise. It should be a so. So you're looking for the finance committee to get a head start should, yes. this, le the plan should this legislation. Yeah, well, is that, yeah, to come up with a contingency plan, but I, I just want to read that notwithstanding any provision of the law to the contrary, the legislative body of the school district may cancel the district's vote on an article. So, so we, you know, we have the, there's still questions even, even, even with that, but at least what I'm not clear is that we can, do we have to rewind, do we have to rewind the entire ballot? We would negate our ballot, yeah. reprint a new one with whatever article you chose to remove. Yeah. And that would have to be done by town meeting day if you still wanted to have it. Have it that, that's what I'm trying to get at. So I, I think, I, is, yeah, we need some clarification. The sole purpose of amending the proposed budget. Like that's the only grounds on which we can to cancel the district we, vote on one. Cancel an article of articles. So it seems like it's very clear that it can only relate to the budget. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're gonna we're gonna have mail in ballots going out awfully soon. Um, yeah. Are they? Do we know? No, I'm just thinking. Any small PRO, I think last year they misprinted yeah, someone's so name and it was an invalid en entry. Is it possible to just have that on there as an invalid entry that doesn't get counted if we, you know, if if we cancel it? That would be a good question. That would be a good question. And that, yeah, and that's yeah. some of the questions that are coming up. I I also wanna. Um, we also have these student hearings, so just to check on time that the families have arrived. Uh, so Ursula and then Michaela. Oh no, Michaela, you were first. Go ahead. Right? Yeah, yeah. Me. Go ahead. Oh, thanks. Um, I <laughs> want to express um, like maybe concern with um, putting this all on the finance committee, um, especially if. Their meeting at the Tuesday morning time. Um, I'm, I'm qualified on the finance committee as <laughs> um, the Worcester representative, so to speak. Um, but mostly for the Wednesday meeting. Anyway, my point is, I feel that it's important that all five towns be represented in the people who are tasked with reduction. Yeah, and, and I think that is a good consideration. So we could add, you know, like, so if you want to be on that, it, and I'm on it, but I can't do Tuesday morning. Right, but yeah, so we, we can change that. Another day of information if we do it, move it to the evening. You what? We would have another day of information from the legislature if we went to the Tuesday evening. <laughs> Yeah, well, we can, we, there's no reason, you know, we're operating on a different, but there's no reason to not try to find, we would have to make sure that it doesn't conflict with another, I can't remember. The, I can't on Tuesday, but to, yeah, Tuesday, Tuesday. So it'll be Tuesday after. Do we want to pause this conversation? Yeah, let's pause this conversation and then back to it yeah. so we don't have to rush. Yeah. Okay. yeah, we'll make a motion and come back and we're going to go to the other. 
or we're just no, we need to get motion to table before we I don't think there's a motion on the table yet so you're not no, going no. To, yeah yeah so just mechanically for folks in the room the board's going to take a motion in a second for executive session Mark if you could just create a single breakout room with Jonathan and Floor, and she can bring her computer in. Yes, Does that work. Yeah, I'll bring the computer on, and I'm looking at my clerk. Uh, you have your you have your computer with you. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, so let's give him a minute to get his computer up and running, and we will come back to resume the rest of the board meeting for yeah. those desire desire to stay. Yeah. So, which is not usually what we do. So I just wanted to be really clear about that. We are coming back. Okay. So I'm looking. For a motion. So I'm uh, moved to enter executive session to consider local student hearings for disciplinary matters and residency requests to include Megan Roy, students and student uh, parents of the students and uh, students for the person. Okay, thank you. Okay, and just there's no, yes, okay, let's move to the other. Uh, so, well, do we have the vote? Yes, oh. all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 And we're gonna go next door. I move to come out of the to leave executive session. Yes. Second. Second. All those in uh, favor, please sign by by saying aye. 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 So I move to accept the administration's uh, decision or record. I move to accept the administration's recommendation regarding student disciplinary. Second. Number one. Huh? Second. So who moved that? Okay. All those so, in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you. Jonathan. So I move to enter executive session uh, for a student disciplinary hearing to include Megan Roy, students, and student support. Thank yes. you. Second. All right. Aye. 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 Oh, Aye. 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 I move to accept the administration's recommendation regarding No, we did. Yeah, we did. I move to uh, accept the administration's recommendation regarding student disciplinary. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Are we going to the residency? Any abstentions? There's no residency. So can we? Yes, oh, there is. Oh, there's oh, there three. Is. There is. Yeah. Uh, oh, we can do that again. There's can, no one waiting for that one. Yeah. So we could go on to the rest of our meeting. Yeah, but can we just put a little body to it? Do what? I mean, uh, yeah, let's, yeah. Uh, let's have a five minute break. Okay, we we left it in the we were talking about Act One Twenty Seven mm -hmm. and a, the the finance committee. So there's two things we could do. The finance committee is meeting and the it, and the meeting is warned for for Tuesday in in the morning. We have some regular finance the regular finance committee that that we need to that we need to do. We could at that meeting consider finding different times to to meet or send a doodle poll. A, we could empower the finance committee to come up with recommendations. I, you know, right now, really, we're spinning, right? Because we don't have enough information. What I want us to be is to be nimble in order to be doing some work. So I, I'm committed to finding, or I'm, I think we are as a board are committed to finding alternative dates if needed. I, I, I have a suggestion, and I yes. really want to be scheduling, but maybe we could do this time next Wednesday. Finance committee and anybody else who can make them. You mean yeah. 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 Yeah.
Because you celebrate it every day. I got it. I got it. I got it. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. So I, I would ask that any information that is shared with the finance may be shared broadly. We, we we, did. Yeah. Well, right away, um, because we heard about numbers tonight that we don't that haven't been shared, and I think having uh, that discussion it needs to be a board discussion because. And I, I think, you know, we don't have a lot of time. We have like five weeks. Um, and if we're going to be talking about another budget, and I think we are, because I, I think there's no way in hell that the legislature is not going to pass this first legislation because they're looking at a what, $200 million hole uh, that they yeah. cannot fill or yeah. don't want to fill. Right. Uh, yeah. So this legislation, I think, will go through no doubt and quickly. And we should just have, mm -hmm. I yeah, think, yeah, okay. let's move. Okay, um, because so, you know, I, I know you, you've mentioned about cutting off the one hundred eighty-two thousand dollars as an easy fix, um, but you know, the, I, I think the budget number was not as much a problem as it was the allocation. And I think we can have a board discussion mm -hmm. on allocation again, um, and because that's where the, I think that's where our discussion fell fell down last time. So, um, opening up the funding to everyone, just, everyone, okay, everyone, okay, everyone wait, who wants to saying, to participate in getting the numbers. Um, right away, it will be it will serve our purposes. So two things, but I'll, I'll let Ursula speak. Cause it's, it's, so I have a question on, I guess, the specifications on that. We as the board set the overall district budget, yes, and then the administrators get to decide how it's allocated. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so ultimately speaking, the board has no say in how they use the money. Well, we, but, but by policy, we can describe how we want the money to be used. And that's the answer is yes to that. That is I mean, out of the fire. It's not, you know, it's not out of our realm to say that we favor and support having full time nurses in every school um, and counselors. That is a policy decision we can make, and we can direct the, the administration to do that. So I, I don't want to waste a lot of time on this conversation uh, right now because we're not going to get anywhere. I, I, I think we have to make a commitment that we're going to give clarity. And, and this is not really helping our administrators right now feel confident, I know, but we're going to give them, we're going to give them clarity. It's, it's clear that we need to bring this to the entire board. The finance committee is going to head, go ahead and have their meeting on Tuesday because the Tuesday meeting is usually our regular business. We need to continue to do our job. So we're going to do that. We need to have an emergency meeting as a board. We, at the finance committee, we'll, dis, we'll discuss what is the best process to be able to carry a new budget forward. Is that okay? We don't need any motions. And then we can move on into our uh, approved new teachers and resignations. Is that okay? I don't, I don't mean to cut the conversation, but we're not gonna get anywhere right now on that. We haven't allocated the time. We don't have enough information to make cuts or talk about the cuts. Right. Okay. Well, but, I think, but we can plan on philosophy. We don't wanna be caught short again um, and have to make uh, decisions uh, under, you know, the time pressure, because it's time pressure. Uh, if we have 30 days, you know, five weeks from now, we don't know when this leg legislature is going to go through, but it will in all probability. And so we should be planning. But I hear Floor saying we're going to come together that she's recognizing that it's more than the finance committee that wants to explore this. And so she's acknowledging, okay. let's send out a doodle poll so that as many can be there that can be there, and right. hopefully we'll have more information. Correct. Okay. So thank, thank you, Laura. Okay. All right. So uh, approved teachers and resignations and needs of absence. It's on page 23. I move to accept the resignation of Mark Fine, IT director, our district. With appreciation. That is resigned. Well, no. I would like to second for the appreciation for his hard work. Thank you. Yeah. To the district. Thank you, Mark. Some tough times. And getting us some tough times. Yeah. 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 Thank you, Mark, and congratulations on this new beginning for you. And thank you. Yeah. Thank you for all you've done for us. Thank uh, you. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Sorry, I got you really loud, Joe. So you just like, Whoa. all right. Okay, okay back to the okay. approved. Yeah, so 
when we're gonna approve the minutes, I already gave uh, uh, Lisa some. Uh, there were I was not able to send her the page with all the participants the last time. We just went through the participants, added the Dodi nurse and some administrators that were missing from the last time. I didn't want to go through the whole list. There's no edit except who was there because it, she was remote, and I didn't send her the picture of the list <laughs> on time. All right. Mm -hmm. So with that, I am looking for a motion. I move to approve the minutes from this board meeting from uh, 1 17 24. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Was the title aye. Washington aye. Union School? Is it always Union? Unified. Unified, Unified Union. Unified Union. But, but, no, I know that, that used to be in Washington. No. Was it always shorter to Uni Unified? No. Or, like it is up here? No, no, is that oh, okay. of saying that? no it's Sorry, Washington said. Central Unified <laughs> Union. Yeah, 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 no, it's, yeah, it was, that's the type of Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they just knew that we were going to be here too long, so they were trying to get us to Uni Union. I just never noticed it before. I didn't think I was ever looking. I just so really I was like, oh, you should. <laughs> Uni Union. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, that's what I so, so we the future future agenda items are on our board work plan, but I think the most important item in our agenda right now is the, is the budget. Right? So we'll have we will be continuing. So please be looking at your email. And Megan and I are both trying to keep you updated every minute that we have received information. You have had it in your mailbox, whether it is from us yeah. or from the Vermont School Association. But and so. Please keep looking at your email. And then we're going to move into the. I need another executive. I need to enter executive session for a student residency request to include Superintendent Becky Second. Okay. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Let's move to executive session. Yeah, but there. Make a motion. We need to move. Oh no, there's no. Yeah, but there's no. There's no action. Yeah. So no action. No action. Okay. Okay. With that, if you want to move, we adjourn. <laughs> one, one quick question: Did yeah. we want to message anything about the budget? Uh, even, even like a, we're on it. Yeah, yeah, we could, we could, yeah, and I think we could use some of the link that we've got. Right, like just say this is. We could use some of the language that we have, and yeah, just say this is information that we have. I have a newsletter that's going out oh, on yeah. Friday anyway. It doesn't always line up, but it does today. Why don't I do a Summary yeah. in, 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 in the newsletter. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. 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 Yeah.